Okay, so a question I got received by WhatsApp. Uh, please describe your experience with an enlightened teacher 20 years ago. In as much detail as possible, talk about what you were doing to participate it and describe things in as much uh, detail as possible. Were you inqu Was inquiry or the observer what you were practicing when it happened? Uh, this is referring to my videos on talking about my white light spiritual experience with a uh, teacher doing self-inquiry with me. And so I'd like to give some context to that. And um, it is uh, one of the important things with how I uh, am nowadays as a spiritual teacher um, and, res and also re relating to my spiritual experience. So... I had, uh, you know, I was well aware of Hawkins and also Romana's teachings um, of the observer and Hawkins talking about his um, the death of the ego experience, which is quite terrifying, where he he came up upon the terror of the final death of the ego, and was willing to go through that last terror, not the death. He says like when the body dies, that's not real fear, that's just a minor fear. The terror of the death of the ego is extreme that you'll never ever have an ego again for all eternity. Um, and that's the terror the ego really doesn't want to go through. It doesn't really mind you getting run over or anything. That's not a big deal to the ego because it still survives. But uh, the death of the ego is something that is the last and the most extreme terror. And he talks about being willing to go through that and the final death of the ego and the experience of enlightenment to, to go into the infinite light and for the ego not to re-energize or to re-orchestrate. And he's a teacher of enlightenment. You know, Hawkins is a teacher of, of enlightenment to, of the very highest order. So um, so there was awareness that is that is the goal for this lifetime, 100% death of the ego. Not death of the body, but to go through the death of the ego. That's the, um, that's the calling. That's the uh, spiritual calling for this life. Um, so there's a real willing, but of course the ego terror of, you know, ne I'll never ever have an ego again. I've got to be willing to go through the pain of it dying off. And I've got to let go of everything that my ego wants to hold on to and cherishes and be willing to sacrifice it all for good. So it's quite terrifying, really. Anyway, um, so I was, I was seeing this, um, this uh, teacher of enlightenment who does self-inquiry. And he, he said in one of the groups, satsangs, um, if anyone wants a one-to-one -one meeting with me, let me know. So this inner voice said, like, you better ask him for a one-to-one. -one. Um, and I did. And on the day that um, it was, I was supposed to meet him, I had a gout attack in my feet. I felt like I was going to die. My whole body had swollen up. And my ego is saying, don't go. You can't go and see him. Just ring him up and say you can't meet him for a one-to-one. -one. Of course, my ego was terrified that if I'm alone with an, a teacher of enlightenment in a room without any escape, uh, my ego may face death for all, all eternity. So it just blown up the body and was just shouting, screaming at me that you can't go and you can't even walk anyway. Your feet are all swollen up. So just ring him up and say. And there was this deep kind of inner spiritual knowingness like this might be your only opportunity in this lifetime to face the death of your ego um, no matter what you have to go and face it um, so even though my I had this uh, gout attack the feet were really swollen with pain um, something deeper than my ego told me I had to go and see him and not miss that opportunity it was like if you miss this you're not going to get another chance this lifetime so don't screw this one up. So eventually I thought, you know, I thought I was going to die on the way up there, quite literally. And every footstep was excruciating pain. But there was the calling for enlightenment. So I was just hobbling along. I went onto the London Underground, the tube in London. And this uh, this guy in the tube station came up to me and he said, why on earth are you trying to move? You know, you shouldn't you shouldn't be on the tube you're a liability. I mean, you might drop dead. You know, you shouldn't come on here. You know, you're a risk to, to everyone. You should just stay at home and not try to walk because I looked so bad. I looked like I was half dead and I couldn't walk, which was true. Anyway, I hobbled along and got to got to see the teacher um, 
and he he I told him I think I'm you know uh, uh, you know that was I was in extreme agony. Anyway, he took me to his room, and we sat down, and he put on his little tape recorder. It was a long time ago because he wanted to record the satsang with me and him. And uh, I had been practicing the observer, and I was aware of an observer behind my body. So I'd been doing that because I'd been going to his satsangs for a long time. And he said to me, Sabir, you know, uh, what are you? And he said, um, well, I'm aware there's an observer behind me, behind my body. Then he just asked me, he said to me, it's very, very different when you're alone with the teacher of enlightenment and there's no other people in the group. It's like your, your, your ego's cornered. There's nowhere to escape. And he said, well, what's behind, what's behind the observer? Is there anybody there? What's behind the observer that's observing your body? And um, he said that. And as he said that, suddenly the whole world disappeared. Uh, I disappeared. He disappeared. The world disappeared. And there was infinite light and love. Um, I mean, a light and a love beyond this world. And in fact, uh, I don't know. I mean, I don't know why I'm embarrassed. That, but the Course in Miracles actually describes it eloquently. There's a there's something in the lessons which says, you know, the happiest moment you've experienced in this world, imagine the happiest moment you've experienced in this world, and then times it by 100, and then times it by 100 again, and you still have no idea of the experience of, of the light of divinity. So even the most happiest moment in this world, multiplied by 100 and 100 again, and still what you can experience in this life is nothing compared to the light of God, if you like. That's probably the most eloquent description of what I experienced. It was a light so intense and a love so sublime at a level of infinity and intensity where it's 100% obvious there is no thought, there is no contrast, there is no this and that, there is no time, there was never a world, there was never a me, there was never anything else, and in that place, nothing ever can exist and will exist or ever can or ever will exist in that light and love. Beyond, I mean, there is no world and there can never, ever be a world and there can never be birth or death or this or that. It's beyond that. By The only analogy I use with my words is if you are in the middle of the sun at the level of infinite light, blinding light beyond imagining could you have a shadow could you have a this and a that absolutely impossible not in that infinite light no this or that or shadow or color could exist it's it's million miles beyond that so that was the experience so um and then okay so hawkins really describes the levels of consciousness really well so in that light that's beyond this world and beyond this and that um, what seemed to happen was the impossible. Uh, a, a Well, I'll describe it in detail. It seemed like there was something like a vague thought, like a, a red, um, uh, like a red um, thing that started to emerge. And, and there was an identification with it. And then the experience of a thought. And as the thought was identified with in the infinite light, suddenly the world reappeared and um but there was now like it was like ecstasy and bliss and um there was just tears uh flowing down this body's uh, cheeks and incapacity to speak and immobility and it seemed like then muji just um experience you know knew that there was no talking or moving from this body it was just uh, stunned by bliss and ecstasy so the, it seemed like the body was pushed out of the the house uh, there was no point in him trying to communicate with what was there. And uh, so, and what and the experience was like, you know, before coming in, it seemed like it was a dark autumn day. But when the body was pushed out, it seemed like it was bright summer. Everything was in technicolor, in infinite, infinite radiance. And um, there was just tears flowing down because everything was so stunningly beautiful. It was like it was there was no experience of body, but it was just like absolutely stun every moment was stunning revelation and just tears flowing down. Anyway, eventually, because it was work, uh, as the thoughts were identified with the levels of consciousness 
it went, went down. Eventually, there was identification with thoughts and the body, and the world became more dim and dualistic as I went down uh, the levels of consciousness. Later on, uh, whenever I met that teacher in lectures, um, he would report that it was like, you know, there was a, a sudden light in the room, and, and he reported that um, his tape recorder ceased working. So he also experienced that infinite light that uh, came through. And he often shared that when I was in the lectures with him. Anyway, um, so, um, yeah. So, okay, so my style as a spiritual teacher, of course, is that the dualities of the ego, if I'm holding on to time, thought, body, this, that, stories, any kind of belief systems, is to the extent that I'm holding on to these dualities and repressed feelings, to that extent, am I blocked off from the infinite light and love? I get cast into a world of bodies, thoughts, me, you, color, contrast, darkness, light, love, all of these things, which are not really the absolute truth. They're just aspects of the illusion or still experiencing dualistic separation from that which is the absolute truth which is far beyond anything that is dualistic. So I'd say the infinite light and love beyond duality is the truth. And as soon as I'm experiencing anything less than that, I'm in different levels of separation or duality uh, that are being cut off from that, which is the underlying substrate of infinite truth of, of reality. <laughs>